Please allow me to begin with a short digression about an author of one of my childhood science books explaining how some early scientists didn't believe in the presence of oxygen because they couldn't see it. What would chemistry be today if oxygen had never been acknowledged? The most brilliant people in the world haven't been able to unify the forces. Certainly not for lack of intelligence. It was because they always began with insufficient information. A permanent structure cannot be completed without a solid foundation. Change is inevitable. But just how much change will surprise you. We know that groups of molecules and energy under the right conditions create what we know as a critical mass and explode outwards in all directions. These explosions can and have occurred on many different scales. The vast size of some may be hard to comprehend, creating many different sizes and shapes of existing molecules and their basic components. Energy and mass all traveling outwards from the initiating force, creating pressure from the inside of the event pushing outward. Utilizing the law of inertia, the outside of the expanding particulate would want to stay at rest the particulate closest to the center of the event pushing on all existing particulate creating different pressures graduating stronger at points closer to the center to weaker at the outer edge of the expanding events. These explosions create asymmetrical particulate much smaller than what we know as atomic structures also creating residual pressure. These smaller particles, field particles, make up most of the known universe in what is thought of as the void of outer space, all in pressurized contact with each of its surrounding particles. Field pressure transmits all wavelengths of energy consistent with a rack of billiard balls transmitting energy almost instantaneously, except in an omnidirectional manner. Energy cannot travel as waves through nothing. Energy cannot be destroyed or created, only its form altered. I found this statement to be very interesting. It involves energy changing form. Energy could not decide what to create next. Therefore, another source must dictate the outcome. That source is non-spherical or an asymmetrical mass or particle, interrupting the directional flow of energy through field particles. As energy waves circumfluent larger surrounded non spherical particles, some of the energy must be placed into a feedback loop, continually orbiting indefinitely around an inner particle or particles, as long as there is an energy feed or until the particle or particles change shape, canceling the energy system. If the same energy were to travel around a spherical shape, all energy would reach the back at the same time, canceling the potential orbiting of energy. The direction energy travels and orbit frequency is dictated by the shape and size of the surrounding particles and the shape of the surrounded particle or particles. It is the direction that the orbiting energy travels that dictates the outcome of energy creating a quantum form as mass. Different shaped particles coalescing in different densities forming different elements. 
the same shape particles coalescing in the same manner every time to create the same element. The manner in which particles coalesce is created by energy orbits traveling in opposite directions at the point of approach and the finite frequency of the orbiting energy. As the two particles or masses meet, the energy at the point of approach will try to assume one another's orbits, creating a weakness in the static barrier at the point of approach, allowing field pressure from opposing sides to push the two particles together. The two separate orbits of energy becoming one excess energy being cast away. In the opposite effect, if the two particles or masses had orbiting energy traveling in the same direction at the point of approach, the energy would be projected back toward approaching structures creating a repulsive effect. This explains the basic principles of molecular cohesion and magnetism. With molecular cohesion proceeding from micro to macro, the same principle is still in effect, with the energy system being relative to the size of the mass and the redistributed pressure from the displacement of surrounding smaller field particles, also energy release from the mass and surrounding energy sources. It is the redistributed pressure that facilitates orbit in masses. Gravity is similar to the sum of factors in an equation. Gravity is not an elemental force. It is an outcome of circumstances created by the pressurized particle field. In masses, different shaped particles coalesce in different densities and decay at different rates facilitating the regulation of energy release. If the outside of a mass is too dense for the trapped energy on the inside to be released and the pressure from the field particulate collapses the outer surface, an explosive force would be necessary to stabilize the event and the process begins again. Thank you.